right, everyone, this is Tim along Like Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants Sports Talk Entertainment. It's September 20th, Monday, the Monday before the Falcons game. Giants three and a half point favorites over the Falcons at home. Eli Manning, Jersey retirement. How much more fun can you get than that? The Atlanta Falcons, of course, uh, lost the squeaker to the Tampa Bay Bucks, 48-25. They did make it within a game in the second and third quarter by scoring 25 unanswered points. But of course, the defense for the uh, Bucks came came to life, and so did Tom Brady, and they lost that game 48-25. So the Falcons are currently fourth on the NFC South at a 0-2 record. On paper, this is a game the Giants should win handily. They should be more than a three and a half point home favorite. But this is the NFL. This is any given Sunday. Shout out to Steam and Willie Beeman of the Miami Sharks. But we have no idea what's going to happen. But we should, as Giant fans, have a modicum of hope that we should easily win this game. I mean, if you take a look at the Falcons roster, they are not devoid of talent. They, well, they don't have a lot of talent, but they have, some, they have a mixture of talent. To me, Mac, Matt Ryan, even at 36 years old, is still a quality quarterback. Josh Rosen has his backup, so if we can get him hurt. And I know I don't you shouldn't say people should get hurt, but if he gets hurt, uh, I'd be very happy to see Josh Rosen. If Mike Davis is your um, lead bell cow back. You know, you got a little problem there. He's got 24 carries, 87 yards, 3.6 yards. You got uh, Patterson also formerly of the Bears kind of over there running the ball, catching the ball. You do have some talent, of course, in the in the skilled positions outside of wide receivers with Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts they had had a better game. So, so far for the season, he's targeted 14 times, nine receptions, 104 yards. Longest one of the season is 24 yards. But honestly, outside of that, I'm not, I'm not scared by anything offensively that they do. Defensively, I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm not, I'm not scared of Dante Flower, Fowler, excuse me, Fowler. I always get that name wrong. I'm not scared of Deion Jones, the middle linebacker. I'm not scared of their safeties, neither Harmon or Harris. I'm not. If you look at it, this should be a get right quick game for the Giants. And I said that last week, too, that we could potentially steal a home. And it, literally, we would be. We would have been stealing a division game at the home of someone else, uh, one of our opponent's home teams and, and uh, homes. And, that's, and that would have been what we needed. We could have stole a division game on the road against Washington, but it didn't work out that way. We're not going to get back into that debacle. But what could the Giants do right now? If we're looking at it Monday morning, we're going to do a more in-depth dive. But what could they do right now to make this a, a more, of a uh, more of an opportunity to win? Because like I said, on paper, we have much more talent. And it was interesting because I was watching the Patriots game. And I was watching the Patriots defense and I was thinking to myself, you know what? They, they, they do it right. The defense. And I'm not saying Patrick Graham doesn't do it right, but Patrick Graham does not. And, and it's only been two games into the season, but he hasn't been disguising his defenses. And that's what kind of confused Zach Wilson yesterday. The, the Patriots have this ability to look like they're playing press. And then all of a sudden drop into like, like cover three, cover three. And then they look like they're going to be playing cover one. And all of a sudden they're playing press. It's their ability to disguise what they're doing. And I think that's that. Of course, he was also playing against a rookie quarterback, but that's what confused the Jets that they had the ability to disguise their defense. Now I went back and tried to look at some of the giant film and it's hard to do unless you have like the closed circuit uh, feed for the game where you can see all the angles, but there was plenty of times in that game reviewing the film and looking at it. You could probably guess or tell, I would say 75% of the time, what defense or what defense the secondary was playing. You really could. You could tell by how far they're playing off the men, how close they get, 
how and 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 it's and it's almost like to the fault that like I say, if you watch the Patriots, you have no idea. And that's and that's the thing. If you have a quarterback who has any sense or has been in the league for an extended period of time and knows how to read defenses, he's going to be able to pick up on the tells of what a defense is doing. And that's kind of what happened the last two weeks with the, the last two weeks with the Giants. Now, I, I will admit 100 percent. I did not think Tyler Heineke was going to be able to read the defenses like he was going to. But he he read the defenses all the way of the Giants. It's almost like somebody was telling them, you know, what the Giants were going to run. Because the way he was finding guys wide open in the middle of the zone, and it wasn't even blown coverages. The guys were just picking spots because it's almost like they knew by taking a look at the defense what they were doing because they're not disguising the defense. They did a great job. Patrick Graham did a great job last year at times of disguising his defenses, disguising his coverages. Now, if a layman like me could take, take a look at the film and go, oh, yeah, that, he, he's, he's going to play a soft shell zone here, or he's in zone here, or he's in press here. Imagine what a quarterback who's, who's in the film room, who's studying an entire week to learn an, an, a team, an opposing defense, can do if he has the ability to have any sense to pick apart, you know, to understand or read defenses. And like I said, that's why I give a lot of kudos to the Patriots. And they've been doing this for years. And a lot of times their secondary has been together for years. And and another good example of a team that did it for years was the Legion of Boom over in Seattle. Those guys came up together. And you had no clue what their defensive backfield was doing. They played, they, they disguised their packages and coverages so well that you had no idea what they were running. Now, I think what's happening now is, and I've said this a million times, the league got film on Patrick Graham, and they're adjusting to what he's calling. And they're just, they're, he's not disguising what he's doing. Now, it's, it's not a slight against Patrick Graham because some of the greatest defenses in the world got picked apart. The 46 zone in 84, 85, and 86 for the Bears was unstoppable. Because it, 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 it not only had to do with the play calling, but it had to do with the personnel they had. And once the league started figuring out, listen, when they're blitzing all these guys, just look for the short dump off or just look for the guy in the middle of the field. Two, st- two three-step drop and throw the ball. Because when the rush is coming that fast at you and, you th- and you're able to get the ball out and out of the, you know, out of the pocket... You are going to turn, or you're going to probably turn a big play. And then also, people figured out what the 46 zone was very simple. How, how do you combat it? You run the draw. You see when they're going to sell out, and you run the draw, and then you're in the second level with nobody there, with the safeties eight, nine, 10 yards back. Now, what happened is Buddy Ryan took it over to Philadelphia, kind of went a different direction with it. But again, he had the talent. He had Jerome Brown, he had Reggie White. Seth Joyner, he had the he had the talent to play it. He now it was never as successful as the Bears in '85, but it was still a successful defense. It wasn't until he went over to the Houston Oilers that the whole wheels fall off the bus because the leagues figured out his cover. Leagues figured out his defense. It happens. Same thing with the West Coast. Same thing with the run and shoot. So what the Giants just need to do, and I think Patrick Graham needs to do, is first we got to figure out how to cover the tight end. Kyle Pitts should scare the hell out of anyone right now on the Giants because the fact that we really don't have a linebacker, I think that that can hang with him. The Ricky Bobby said it, you know, Ricky Bobby said it best, you know, no one can hang with his stuff, especially not on the Giants linebacking core. You have to hope Lorenzo Carter, maybe has the speed. I doubt it. You're going to probably have to put a safety on him. You're probably going to have to either put McKinney or or McKinney or Peppers or not Logan Ryan. Do you want to put a corner on him? No, I don't think so. Because he's big enough, he's big enough to get around the corner. But I think it's more of just disguising the coverages better. And then the other key is going to be, and I don't think it's going to be that much of a key this week, is we got to figure out where we're getting the rush from. I've been screaming this since before camp, since before the draft, since before free agency. We have no edge. We have no edge whatsoever. 
So we we need to we need to play better in the secondary to allow our defensive tackles the opportunity to get upfield to make the sack and make the play or make the pressure. And I think the better way, the easiest way to do that is to find a way to better disguise our coverages. I'm not gonna say plain and simple, but plain and simple. We're gonna have a lot of good videos this week. We're gonna do a lot of fun stuff. We're gonna do an Eli Manning show, I think, at nine o'clock on Friday. Uh, then we'll have our Chuck Talk again live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before the game. Hope everyone has a great week. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Jets. What's talking entertainment? And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, ring the button, you know what it means. That'd be awesome.